So if it's not you, the idea will find someone else and someone else will write your story. And I did feel like I had a huge emotional baggage blockage that was holding me back until actually last week. Hello, welcome to the Healing for Artists podcast. My name is Helene Asmin, actor, artist, and creative entrepreneur. And let's just hop into it. So today, as you can hear, we are outside, we are in nature, and I just was on a mental health clarity walk and just thought, I am really feeling like having a chat with you. So let's just do that. Yesterday, I went to the best brand event that I've been to this year. It was with Dry Disco, and it's their first ever event. And it was held at the Ministry of Sound, which, if you don't know, is a massive club in London. It's a big deal. Every top artist has performed there. It's just it's a very famous site. And their first ever, the two founders, Millie Gooch and Stephanie, have teamed up and created Dry Disco as two sober girls who are the life and soul of the party, but stop drinking and stepped away from that UK drinking culture and have created a fantastic festival that happened last night. It was amazing. There was live talk panels about self-confidence, loving yourself and sobriety, curiosity. They had breathwork classes. They had sassy dance workshops and a big disco at the end. It was amazing, great time. I met some amazing, amazing, amazing people. I met the founder of Mallow Beauty. If you don't know what that is, if you are on TikTok, you would have definitely seen their products. They're always sold out. They're a beauty brand that specializes in body positivity through and through. The founder, Laura, who I ended up chatting with, had a great talk. She was telling me how she even founded her business in the first place. And that was because she was suffering with acne. She had stretch marks, all of this. That's like normal. Everyone has that. But it wasn't being shown in the beauty industry. And she was seeing models with acne come in and being like, amazing. Like, you look just like me type of thing. And then post-shoot, the pictures would come back and they would be completely photoshopped and face blurred and taking out the acne, which fine, but Laura felt like there was a big need to showcase natural beauty and how humans are, because why are we creating this unrealistic expectation of what women should look like all of the time? Then she went on to create Mala Beauty and she was telling me about all the products. Laura used to be a skincare buyer for the top beauty skincare brands in the country, globally, worldwide. She knows exactly what she's talking about. And she was in depth going into different ingredients, active ingredients that were in her skincare line and exactly what that does for your face. And it's not ever anything that I've ever heard of. I think ceramide came up. I, I just didn't know what that was. And she's the expert, so really the perfect person to create the business that she created. Anyway, the products are always sold out. Unicorn Shave Butter, I think, is the number one bestseller. It's this, like, cream-looking consistency that is rainbow. That's probably why it's called the unicorn. And it smells incredible. I got given one. I've not had a chance to try it out. Um, Next time I need a shave, that's where we're going. So that was a lot of fun. And I was just chatting to a lot of different women at this event. Um, A lot of Southeast Asians. Shout out to the Asians. Hello. Um, And it was just so insightful talking to different people. I met a manifestation coach and another girl who's a creative that wants to do fashion. She's an artist and... We just form this very tight-knit group straight away, a very genuine connection type of situation. 
you always want to find people that are on the same wavelength as you, who have beliefs that maybe you didn't even know that you had yourself. And it's not until you meet people that share those philosophies and these positive mindsets that you go, ah, these are my people. So if you don't have one, find yourself a tribe. If you're a creative, if you're an actor, you're going to want to join the Healing for Artists cohort. It's a group of creatives, artists, entrepreneurs, as I like to call them. It's for networking. It's to help you find your tribe and your people and find those like-minded people. It's not until you start going out there, going to events and meeting different people that you do find this. So definitely join the Healing Fratus squad if you haven't already. The link will be in the show notes. Okay, so I've been studying entrepreneurialism for about, oh, three years. And also entrepreneurialism. I've been studying business for three years and looking into entrepreneurialism. They say that you can't teach entrepreneurialism, but you can study methodologies of what entrepreneurs are teaching. There's a lot of information out there. So I would actually argue that you can learn entrepreneurialism and it's not a DNA embedded in you. I do think people who tend to be entrepreneurialistic have always been that inclined but it is a skill and it is something you can learn and pick up even later on in life a lot of these girls that I was talking to said that they thought I was in my late 20s early 30s which I'm not I'm in my very early 20s and it is because apparently not because of my face but because of how I speak they said that I had a very mature way of thinking and it's not something I particularly thought that I had until it was pointed out to me. Um, But it's always good to hear other people's perspectives of what you're like. This opens up a whole can of worms that you might not have noticed because we are our biggest critic. We always have something bad to say about ourselves and we have to do a lot of unlearning, a lot of unwiring of what other people's opinions have been pounded into your subconscious. So it's not even that you're consciously thinking anything bad about yourself. Maybe you think, oh, I don't like this scar on me or I I don't like my skin, right? But that's not how other people see you. The person that cares the most is yourself. No one really cares that much because everyone else is thinking about themselves and dealing with their own inner critic. So we have to do a lot of unlearning and a lot of deconstructing just to get to point zero of going, oh, this is who I am. And self-acceptance is a journey. It's not something that a lot of us had ingrained into us growing up. There's a lot of unlearning that needs to happen to even get to that point. I think it's very interesting having these conversations with different creatives, different women, different people that share a same thinking as you, but all ultimately are on a healing journey. We're all on this journey of unlearning. We're all on a healing journey. This is the healing for artists. This is what we do. And... To recap my personal healing journey last year, I completely burnt out, 120% burnt out. I started getting seizures. I'd never had one before. I was having 10 every single day. It was very, very distressing. But through that, I was still able to get a West End agent. I was able to star as a principal role in a touring adult panto this year that's just finished. I performed as my first principal role in a short play at RADA, Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts. I did some filming for Netflix, for the BBC. I met some amazing people, built a strong network. And that's not to show off in any type of way, because to be honest, I feel like an imposter. I feel like we all feel this way. But it is to say that even through my burnout I was still able to manifest a lot of amazing opportunities but because I didn't accept 
what was happening in my health. It kind of had that delay reaction. And I did feel like I had a huge emotional baggage blockage that was holding me back until actually last week. So last week, I was struggling with replying. I would reach out to people, to brands, to whoever do some outreach work. And then as soon as they would reply with, yes, okay, we're open to that, I would have freak out and just not reply. And that was a constant cycle that I'd have with myself. And then of course, if you don't act on an opportunity, what does it do? It leaves. It goes to find someone else. When an opportunity comes to you and you don't take the action, the opportunity goes, okay, you're not the vessel. This is actually a quote from Big Magic by Liz Gilbert, I want to say, Gilbert. Look up this book if you haven't read it. She wrote Eat, Pray, Love, amazing author. She talks about the idea of ideas and how an idea... So the universe is on this electromagnetic wave, right? And an idea will be on a certain frequency. And when you're tapped into a specific frequency that's open to an idea, an idea can come into you and it's just looking for a vessel that will fulfill the idea and make it into a reality. So the idea comes into you and you think, oh my gosh, I have an amazing idea for a book very very specific the book is going to be about bears who blah 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 okay or a woman that's going on a safari trip because someone in the new york office that big boss's son has taken all the money from the business and run off and so plain jane has to go find the son in the safari or whatever i just said is the example and reclaim the money there's probably like a love story between her and the son anyway that's the big idea that's just come to you it's about 11 p.m you're tired you're getting ready for bed you're like i don't really want to think about that so what do you do you let the idea go but an idea still exists so if it's not you the idea will find someone else and someone else will write your story or whatever idea that you had that you thought was amazing but you didn't take the action on it this is why we see so many people be like they see a product in the shop they see a new app they see a new product and they think i thought of that 10 years ago that was my idea it's very annoying to see other people have major success on an idea that you had and that success so easily could have been yours but it's very easy to not take action. You're like, oh, and don't get me wrong. Not every single idea is for you. Sometimes an idea comes to me. For example, like write a short film came up recently, but I don't have the capacity to take on the project of what it would take to write and create and produce a short film. So I gave it to someone else, an actor who really wants that to happen. And I'm letting her take the lead. I'm letting that be her idea. Not every idea is meant for you. But when ideas do come up that you go, oh, that's a good idea. You need to write it down so you don't forget it. Your brain has like millions of thoughts every single day. You are not going to go, I'll remember that. You won't. Maybe you will. But most people will not. They'll forget about it. And my favorite playwright, actor, Lynn manuel Miranda, he talks about this, of going, when you have an idea, you need to write it down. And you need to make it happen because otherwise someone else will. Again, same theme with Michael Jackson. He got up at 4 a.m. one day and was like, guys, we need to go to the studio. Oh, there's an aeroplane. Michael Jackson said, guys, we need to go to the studio right now because I've had the best idea for a song. And his team said, it's 4 a.m. Why do you need to go to the studio right this second? And he said, well, if I don't, Prince is going to get it because he knows 
maybe it was the other way around. I'm not too sure. But he knew in that moment that if he didn't take action and pursue on the idea, that someone else would pick up on that idea. It's a, it's a real thing. You don't think it's a thing until you actually break it down and look at it from another perspective and go, oh, no, no. This whole ideas thing is a thing. So when you have an idea, write it down. You don't always have to be the vessel who takes the action and turns that idea into reality. But sometimes, sometimes you do. And this is what I had with my huge blockage last week. So I wasn't taking any action. I was letting opportunities pass and then getting frustrated and angry at myself at the fact that I had this opportunity and I just didn't do anything about it why and sometimes you can backtrack and go oh thank you so much sorry I didn't reply here now type of thing but you've set the tone as being someone who's not reliable someone who doesn't reply it's not professional so you don't want to do that if you can help it so for some reason something clicked last week and I felt the blockage clear I don't know if it's because I had a great productive day and I chipped away at everything all the tasks that had built up and every task that I thought about was stressing me out to no end because all I would think is I haven't done it that needs to get done and I haven't done it so by going let me just do that quickly or making it a really, really, really small task. You just have to get the ball rolling. Everyone says momentum, get the ball rolling, and it flows quicker. It's true. I broke it down. I set up accountabilities. I had meetings with people. I scheduled things so people were expecting me to show up. So I showed up. Because at that point, I wasn't able to show up for myself. And if that's you... You might need an accountability group. You might need to call a friend and say, hey, I'm really struggling. Can we set up a meetup where we call like once a week and discuss our goals and see if we've got any further along? Give it some stakes. I know that some people like to do monetary ones and say $50. If I don't finish my book by this deadline, it's yours don't have to go that extreme but having someone there to hold you accountable when you cannot show up for yourself I is very valuable it will help you clear that blockage I've had many accountability groups I'm in a blogging accountability group I had one set up with two of my best friends from home it's a real thing and once you have someone helping you once you have someone being accountable with you once that ball is rolling and you're ticking off your to-do lists and you're feeling good you're getting high off of your own energy and what you're putting out into the world that you start building that trust in yourself again and you start going this isn't that scary it's not that big a deal it's not that deep sis that's my personal life mantra I like it's not that deep sis because it isn't If it's not going to matter in five years, it's not that deep, sis. So when you have time to build up that trust in yourself, it is a process. You know, some days you're going to wake up and feel like a bus has hit you in the face and you don't want to do anything. That's fine. But it's about doing the small steps. Small steps, great distances. You roll out the yoga mat to do the yoga, but you didn't do the yoga, but you rolled out the mat. I showed up for myself that day. A win is a win. No matter how small it is, if it's a win, it's a win. Okay? You can take that. And then over time, you can take another step. Maybe this time you roll out the yoga mat, you stand on the yoga mat, you didn't sit on it. That's a win. That's another small step. The next time you roll out the yoga mat, you stand on the yoga mat, and you touch your toes. You put it all away. The next time you do one circuit, a stretch up, a downward dog, cobra, the cow, cat one, stand up, put it away. The next week, you do two. Maybe the next week, 
I'll put on a yoga video and I'll follow the instructor. But you see how you have to build it up. You have to dip your toe in the water. Yes, it's good to dive in head first sometimes, but that's scary. And still by building that trust in yourself day by day, that's still putting yourself out there and that is still a scary thing to do. But because if you just dive in and dip out, dive in and dip out, dive in and dip out, over time you're not really making as much progress as you would be if you built it up as a habit that could be sustainable for yourself, right? If you only lift a weight once, if you want to lift weights, you want to go to the gym, you do it once, you go really, really hard at it and you're hurting for four days straight and you don't want to do it next week because you're still hurting from last week. You don't want to do it the week after because you remember how much it hurt. And then after that, you just kind of don't go back to it. Maybe the next month you go back to it and then the same thing happens. Whereas imagine if you went to the gym and you started off small. Maybe you don't even lift the weights. It's about continuing to go back and reaffirming to yourself and your body that it's not that scary. So you don't trigger your flight or fight mode every time you want to do a habit that is good for you and that you want to do. Because if you want to do it, you don't want to scare yourself off. You want to be able to create methods that work for you, that help you, that you feel like you can build it up and that it will be sustainable for you. Because then you'll start to enjoy it and over time you'll look back and realize, oh my gosh, I've been doing it. And this habit isn't just a habit, it's part of your core identity. You're someone who exercises. Maybe you're someone who eats healthy. It just becomes a part of who you are. I know that James Clear talks about this in Atomic Habits, my favorite book. If you haven't read it, go read it. But it's about getting that 1% better every day. You're taking that small step to build trust. And we know small steps, great distances. You're in it for the long haul. You're doing it because you love it and you want to do it forever or as long as you can. So you have to make it become a part of who you are, a part of who you are in your soul and your identity. Thank you so much for listening to the Healing for Artists podcast. I'm Helena Yasmin. Follow the podcast. Please rate it five stars on Spotify and Apple. It really, really helps. But please follow me at I'm Helena Yasmin everywhere. You can all find this in the show notes. And if you want to be featured in any upcoming episodes, shoot me an email, info at healingforartists.com with your name and your question or your story, whatever you want to share. And thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.